in section 4-3, our objective is to be able to multiply polynomials. Here we just have a simple example of taking x to the third times x to the fifth. What we want to do with this is we want to break this down into its real meaning and try to find a rule to use when we multiply powers. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to take this x to the third and I'm going to write it out for what it really means. So I have x times x times x. Then I need to multiply that times x to the fifth here. So x times x times x times x times x. Then, after we write that all out, we can simplify it. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 x's, so I end up with x to the 8th. So this expression here is really equal to x to the 8th. Now, you could do that on every problem today, but notice it would be kind of time consuming and cumbersome. What most of you probably noticed is to get this answer, all I have to do is take these two exponents and add them together. And then if the base is the same, hey, I just add the base. So notice x is my base, so I get x. And then I took the two exponents and added them together. 3 plus 5 is 8. And that rule is going to be a lot more helpful and a lot quicker then writing out all the exponents and then combining them into one. Now, we want to come up with a general rule for multiplying a power times a power. And that rule is, is if these two bases are the same, you can just add the exponents. Since those two bases are the same, we can simplify this to a to the m plus n. And we got that rule from the last slide where we see we can just add the exponents. Now, this first example, all we need to do is simplify. It's pretty straightforward. It's like the example we started with. So I take a look. These bases are the same. So I'm going to keep that base. And then I just need to add the exponents, 4 plus 2. And then since I can figure out the answer to 4 plus 2, I go ahead and do it, and I get y to the 6th. In example 2 here, same thing. We want to take this monomial and multiply it times this monomial. So I'm going to do this by using the associative and commutative properties. I'm going to group the numbers with the numbers, and this is all multiplication. So I'm going to have 4 times 5. And then I'm going to multiply the powers with the powers, and n to the 5th times n to the second. Then I figure out this, 4 times 5 is 20, and then I can just add those two together, n to the 5 plus 2. I can figure out what 5 plus 2 is, so I go ahead and do that, and I get 20 n to the 7th power. In my next example, it's going to be very similar. So once again, I'm going to use the commutative and associative properties to do this. So I'm going to take the coefficients and put them in their own set of parentheses. And I'm going to take all the x's and put them in their own set of parentheses, x to the second times x. And then take the y's and put them in their own set of parentheses. Now I just need to simplify these. So negative 4 times 7 is negative 28. My rule for the next one is I can go ahead and add the exponents. If a variable is missing an exponent, remember there's always a 1 there. So this is x to the 2 plus 1, according to our rule. of a power times a power, and this is going to be y to the 5 plus 4. That negative 28 is going to be out front. I can figure out what 2 plus 1 is, so I go ahead and do that, and I get x to the third. And we can figure out what 5 plus 4 is, and I get y to the ninth. 
In example four, we're going to continue to use the rule we talked about at the beginning and the associative and the commutative properties to solve these. So once again, I am going to group the numbers with the numbers. So I'm going to do 16 fifths times 15 fourths or group the coefficients with the coefficients. And then I'm going to group the x variables. So I have an x squared times an x to the third. And then I have a y times y squared. Once again, if I just have a variable with no exponent, it's implied that it's a 1, because y to the first is y. Now I need to multiply, so I'm going to simplify. Divide by 5, divide by 5, divide by 4, divide by 4. So now I really have 4 times 3, which is 12. And I'm going to use my rule from the start. I'm going to add these exponents. I'm going to use the rule from the start. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the uh, exponents on the y. So I have a y, and I'm going to add the exponents. Now I just simplify. I have a 12, and I have x to the fifth, y to the third. I'm going to do simple. The last one, once again, we're simplifying, but notice we're going to add some addition in here, so we're going to have to use what we did in the last section to simplify this. So now, what I've been doing in the last few problems, I'm going to do to these two individually. So I'm going to do 2 times negative 6, and then a times a to the fourth times a b squared. Then I'll have plus. Notice I just have a regular 2. There's no other coefficient, so I'm just going to put a 2 out front. And I have an a squared times an a to the third. And then a b times b to the third. Now, multiply it out. 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. Then I'm going to add the exponents. This a has a 1 on it. 1 plus 4. And then I have a b to the second plus 2 times, add those exponents, 2 plus 3. And then add these exponents. Remember that 1 is implied on that b. And I have a b 1 plus 3. And I have a negative 12, a to the fifth, b to the second, plus 2, a to the fifth. the fourth. Now I check to see if I can simplify this even more. I got to look at the variable parts. I have an a to the fifth and a b to the second, and an a to the fifth and a b to the fourth. Those variable parts are not the same, so I cannot combine these. Since those variable parts are not the same and I cannot combine those, that is my solution. For this assignment, I'm also going to add a few of the problems from the previous section with that include these consecutive integer problems. So let's look at a couple of them. On page 150, number 9, it says the greater of two consecutive integers is 10 less than twice the smaller. Find the integers. All right, so we are talking about two consecutive integers. So, I know I'm going to say those integers are n and n plus 1. So now, after I do that, I'm going to set up an equation. It says the greater of two consecutive integers, that's talking about this one, so I'm going to write that, is, remember, means equal, 10 less than twice the smaller. So 10 less than means subtract 10. And then it says twice the smaller. The smaller is up here, so that means 2n. Now I just need to solve this equation. So I'm going to subtract 2n, subtract 2n. I get negative 1n plus 1 equals negative 10. Subtract 1, subtract 1. I get negative 1 equals negative 11. Divide that negative 1 off, and I get n equals 11. Now, look in the directions. It says find the integers. 
Notice, I figured out what n is. That is the first integer. To get to the next integer, I need to add one more to that. And I get 12. So the answer to this is going to be 11, because that's my first integer, or n, up here. And to get my second one, I need to add 1 to that and get 12. So 11 and 12 are the two integers they are talking about. In problem 13, on page 150, it says find four consecutive even integers, such that the fourth is the sum of the two smallest. So now we're talking about four consecutive even integers. So evens count up by two, so that would be n, n plus two, n plus four, and n plus six, with n being my first one. So those are the four even integers. Now I'm going to write my equation. It says find four consecutive even integers such that the fourth, so here is my fourth, n plus six. The word is means equal. The sum of the two smallest. Up here, these are the two smallest. So when it says the sum of those, so I'm going to add those together. Now I just need to solve this, so I'm going to combine like terms, n plus 6 equals 2n plus 2. I'm going to subtract the 2n, subtract the 2n, I get negative 1n plus 6 equals 2, minus the 6, minus the 6, and I get, from that step, I get negative 1 equals negative 4. Divide by the negative 1, divide by the negative 1, and n is 4. And remember, up here it says find four consecutive even integers. I figured out n is the first one. So up here I'm going to start making a list. Then I know they're even, so up here it says to add 2, and I get 6. Up here it says to add 4 to n, and I get 8, and then here it says to add 6 to n, and I get 10. So these are my four consecutive even integers that I am looking for. Now, tomorrow, I will give you the assignment for this section, and you'll have an opportunity in class to work on this assignment and ask any questions you need.